Hi and welcome to Inside ZD Sewing Studio, the sewing show filmed in front of a live studio audience. I'm Mallory Donahue. I'm ZD Donahue. And tonight we're going to show you how to laminate fabric and how machine embroidered applique works. And before we get started, I just want to let you know that all of the products that we feature tonight are available at buysewingthread.com. So if you live out in the middle of nowhere or you don't have a sewing store close to you or you're not close to us, just feel free to click on the link in the video description and you'll be sent to our page where you can get the stuff. Or you can come into the store and get the stuff. Yes, that's right. It's right. all here too. Right. Okay. So. Mom, have you ever laminated fabric before? I don't think so. <laughs> I, I, I've like ironed on wax paper onto like construction know. paper. Yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. Well, this is a big Enclosed. deal. It was laminated. Uh huh. Yes, this is yes. a big deal because oftentimes mom has had experience. Uh, well, yes. uh, way more sewing yes. experience than I have. Yes. But this is a newer product, and you know. You've been around a I while. I can't believe right? I haven't laminated <laughs> anything. But. Well, we just haven't had it in the store, and we got it in the store, and I'm super excited about it. The product is this Heat and Bond Iron on Vinyl. And I know a lot of people, when they hear this, they think iron and vinyl, that's not going to mix because you got. You will melt the vinyl. High heat right. and plastic, right? So you're not, you, you think, no, no, that's not going to work. Well, it does. I've published a blog post on it, got a bunch of photos up on our Facebook of several projects. Um, ZD's granddaughter and my niece, Catherine, we created a pencil bag for her. It's personalized for second grade. We'll put up some photos of that. And uh, anyway, this stuff. Really cute. Stuff really, really stuff. works. Yeah. So anyway, it comes in a two-yard roll is how we sell it. And uh, you're going to need your heat and bond iron on vinyl, okay? You'll also need a Teflon pressing sheet. And this and it has to be Teflon. You can't use like you can use You can use another another kind of pressing sheet, and I'll talk about that. Okay. But okay. I am going to recommend. But you don't want a cloth No, you press. can. You, you, you can. can. Yeah, oh, okay. okay. Hold your horses. Okay. <laughs> Just wanting to know. Okay, so I, I'll, I'll let you know why I prefer the, yeah, the well, Teflon. Yeah, I like Teflon. Yes, okay. and this could be a whole episode in itself about why you'd want a Teflon press right. sheet. Okay, so we'll keep that in mind. And today, we've got a press here, and it's very warm. And uh, is it? Yeah. Not only warm, it's hot. It's, it's really yes. hot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And so this doesn't have to be done with a press. It can be done with an iron. But if you do have a press at home, you're in luck because it'll be a lot easier. Okay, so with the iron-on vinyl. What I've done here is I have cut a piece of the iron-on vinyl. You can see it's shiny on one side. It's got a paper matte finish on the other. And it's even gridded. So. Yeah, yeah. Here, you want to hold that? so that they. And then this is my little piece of fabric, okay? So this can be done for any size of fabric. I'm just going to show you on a small one the first time. First off, I am going to lay down my Teflon pressing sheet in the press. Okay, so it's on my ironing surface or it'll be on your sure. ironing board, okay? And then I'm going to lay down my fabric. And you know, my fabric's a little wrinkly right now. I'm just going to go ahead and give it a press. Give it a press. Yes. You, because, because you don't want to laminate the wrinkles in. No. Unless you want the wrinkles. Sure. sure. I, I haven't tried that yet, right. but no. <laughs> Sounds like maybe another taping. Yeah, no, yeah. Something, something else when we, when we start to uh, experiment. Right. But the, um, you do want your fabric to be flat. You don't want bubbles in your laminating, okay? I'm going to show you this piece and I'll answer some, some questions I'm sure you have. And then you peel, actually, the paper backing. Oh, you actually peel it off uh -huh. before you do it. You peel it off before you do it. We had a customer who bought some of this elsewhere and the directions were in Spanish, which happens to be not her mother her tongue. Language. And okay. so if they were in Spanish and you speak Spanish, that's great, but she did not. Right. Uh, and it's sticky on this side just a little bit. So I'm going to peel it off, okay, put my paper backing down, and I'm going to smooth this onto my piece of fabric. Now, the reason I like to use a Teflon pressing I sheet see why. Yep. under my fabric is so I don't laminate my ironing board. Right, so you don't laminate two. That's the, right. Or another piece of fabric if you were using That's right, laminate. that's right, or, or whatever. Because so, nothing st sticks to the Teflon. That's right, nothing will stick to the Teflon. Now, the manufacturer's instructions on the heat and bond vinyl say that you can then use that your, your paper layer. backing as your top layer okay. to press. 
Sure. If you have an iron, you do this in sections, okay? Right. So that can work. I've got a press, and also when I used the iron, and you saw that in the blog post that I did, I still use the Teflon pressing sheet on top because mm -hmm. I am not perfect and my vinyl may not be on the exact border right. of my sheet and everything and I just want it to be protected. I don't want to get vinyl on my iron right. or on my ironing board. So I'm just going to fold this in half and make a Teflon sandwich. Okay? Now the directions say that you should first press on the top side of the fabric for eight seconds. Mm -hmm. So. One, <laughs> two. And when she says press, she means press. You're not going to scoot the iron not if you have an iron. Not going to scoot your iron. If right. you do your iron, you want to do section. Now, does it say section. to apply pressure? Because with the press, we get pressure. A little but, bit of pressure. Yeah, okay. The heat is the main thing. Okay. Okay. And I'm going to raise this up. I think that was eight seconds, right? Well, close sure. enough, yeah. Okay, and so now it's fused. It is really cool. But... What you're supposed to do next, Is and what I, cool? I no, oh. you're supposed to flip it over. Oh, okay. And do it for four seconds on the okay. second side. Okay, so a little bit less time here. So four Mississippi. Yeah, exactly. Three and, Mississippi. <laughs> you know, doing it with your Three iron's fine. And when yeah. we get our press up. And we take our, now be careful, please, everyone. And the Teflon gets hot. The Teflon conducts heat. This is hot right, right. now. It's not too hot because it was only on there for four seconds. But my vinyl that was a little outside of my piece of fabric is, it, you know, it's stuck a little to it'll the Teflon. Come, it'll come right off. But it'll come off. And so. There you go. There we go. It doesn't stick forever. And now I have a piece of laminated fabric. And so where it's do you. so neat. Where do you see it? Where do you see laminated fabric? Well, we made a pencil case. Yes, which was fun. We see it on lunch bags, mm -hmm. on diaper changing covers, or on diaper bags, etc. cetera. Um, if you have a larger... Placemats. Yeah, placemats. Uh, anything else that you want to be water resistant. Can I laminate anything besides fabric with this, does it say? You know, it doesn't say that, but I am going to find we're out. We're going to try. Yes, okay. we're going to try. We're going to okay. be doing lots of experiments. So okay. keep a lookout on the blog. At right. SoHereBlog.com. Bibs, bibs, bibs. Bibs. Well, for adults and children. <laughs> That's I mean, true. We have, we have a bib for car rides for us. Yes, and, we um, do. <laughs> my friend called it my uh, Taco Bell bib. Because <laughs> <laughs> just get Taco Bell all over you in the car. But I, wanna, I do want to cover some things, some tips for when, you, when you're not using a press, if you don't have the luxury right, of a press. Right, right, right. Your iron may have holes in it. Right. Okay, so your fabric wouldn't get that contact from the iron, okay? And so when you move the iron around, just make sure that you give your vinyl equal pressure all over so that it's shiny all over. I did, when I was pressing my vinyl with the iron, I got a little bubble on my last corner, but I just smoothed it, well, it pressed was still my warm. iron down, okay. and it was fine. So I have not had any trouble with this. Now, Mom, you asked, can you use fabric pressing sheet? Good question. You can. You may laminate your fabric pressing sheet. That's it's not your goal. It's just so worth having the Teflon. But yeah. their their main specification is that it be flat. Right. It's really important to get even distribution right. of the heat and everything to get your laminated right. fabric. Now, what if you're laminating a piece of fabric that's larger than this? Okay, so I'm going to put that one aside and get out my polka dots. If you go to buysewingthread.com and you get a Teflon pressing sheet, you might just want to get another one while you're at I it. I like two. <laughs> I always have two. Yeah, it's yeah. a really good idea to have two. And I'll tell you what, they last forever. Yeah, they do. I mean, I think the maximum. Well, you, what happens is you lose you, them. Or you lose yeah. it or something like that. And so. Before you do that, Mallory, I want you to press the wrinkles out of oh, that. Oh, I was going to. Okay. Thank you for reminding me. OK, thank you. So anyway, well, while that goes, you want you want to peel this? Oh, okay. okay thanks. I guess I hope um, I can see it. I might have to use my bifocal. Something I think something that was a challenge to me when I laminated the fabric was that it was rolled up. Uh, yeah. The, the, the vinyl was rolled up like that, and it has to be rolled up because if it's folded, you get a crease. You don't want exactly. You don't want to buy this, you know, folded right. up. Or it anything. rolls, but you don't want to crease it. Right. And so just be careful when you're undoing it. 
And I had a few threads on top of here that I'm going to move. I had this off, and now I, OK. And now you got it back on? Yeah, I'm, I'm OK. I got it. Not, do I need to do anything more than start it? You want no, it off? there we go. Look, okay. teamwork. Have your mom come to your sewing room, help you out. OK, and now I'm going to. That gonna, was my first time. Good job. Good job. Now I just get to lay this on top. The Teflon pressing sheets give you a degree of freedom. You don't have to worry about, oh, am I getting the vinyl on just perfect? You can cut your vinyl a little larger. Question that I know someone asked in the blog was, do you cut the vinyl to the size of your pattern pieces, lay them on your pattern pieces, or do you laminate a big piece of fabric and then cut out your pattern pieces? And honestly, I think it could possibly depend on the I was going to say, the, the situation. Project. Right, yes, right, yes. Right. Now, of course, my pencil bag I made was two rectangles, so right, I mean, right. issue. You know, uh, I think sort of give it a thought and think about how much vinyl you would be conserving. Right. What's the most conservative way to do Because it? the right. vinyl, you know, it's, it's a little expensive now compared to buying yards and yards of laminated fabric. Right, it's not. It's not. Well, so and the thing about this is you get to laminate the fabric that you want. Whatever you want. And or, I guess we haven't ever laminated um, over embroidery yet. I want to okay. try okay. that. I want to yeah. try that. I want to try laminating over some textures. Sure. And give sure. it a try. Now, they, they, they recommend. I was thinking about putting like some Angelina in there or something uh -huh. and see what happens. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. No, if I had been, if we had had more time, I would have liked to experiment big time. Okay. So watch for that, right? So um, yes, yeah. Okay. I'm just, I don't know. Heat and Bond's gonna call us up and sponsor us because we're just gonna be <laughs> doing so much. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm doing that Angelina. Are stuff, you okay? So okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just thinking about all the stuff I I'm can pressing do now. my other side. Yeah, okay. I, I don't know if you all caught that. Mm -hmm. Did our first side? Pressing our second side. It's just fine. And then we're gonna bring it back up. Now, uh, I guess I lied at the beginning because this press is not available on BuySewingThread.com. But <laughs> well, not this particular one. We can get you. But if a you different press, if you need yes. a press, give us we a call. We will get you one. We'll get you one. Okay. Um, my other question mm -hmm. is, can I laminate both sides? Have we done that yet? I have not done that yet. I don't see why not. And look, I've got my, I've got my laminate, that a little stuck to my Teflon pressing sheet, and then. I just do it. Right. Well, actually, it's not it's really, not really the laminate, stuck. it's the glue that's on it. Yeah, it's the it. glue. Yeah. Okay, and then I've got this. After you've laminated your fabric, you're not supposed to iron it anymore. Okay, okay. sure, because probably you might release the Right, laminate. you would. Right. You could possibly release it, et cetera. Uh, don't dry anything in a dryer right. that you've gotten laminated, but you can, you know, wipe it off with a cloth and everything. And um, that's what you want to do anyway. I mean, if, yeah. Right. So if I put this on... Um, a garment and the other part, of the, maybe part of the garment is not laminated, I need to wash it in cold water and not put it in the dryer. Yeah, I would say Hang so. Hang dry or whatever. Um, the other thing, oh, I, I, I've gotten a lot of requests on how to sew with laminated fabric. Mm -hmm. It'll come up. I mean, don't, don't worry. The, the thing that I did, I'm just going to mention, mm -hmm. is uh, that we, um, I did serge my edges before. I made my pencil bag not only for finishing purposes, but it also cut off any little extra laminate sure. I had. I mean, sure. I could have cut it off with scissors or with a rotary cutter, yeah. but also that was kind of a so sure. helpful sewing tip. Serge your edges, get yourself a Teflon pressing, um, or sure. excuse me, Teflon presser foot as well right. as a pressing sheet, and that's what we got. So. Any questions from, from you? I know this is your first time doing this. So. Well, no, you were pretty <laughs> thorough, I think. I might think of some questions later. Do, Do we you, have any questions from the right. audience? No. No questions? What, pretty good. We did a really good demonstration. Yes, we did. We did. Send us any questions you guys might have. Okay. And She'll be calling tomorrow and right. asking questions. Yeah. <laughs> Or, you know, and we already a a answered the question of where to get it to make right. something cool. So anyway, it's all. Have you, laminated, have you laminated anything other than, I mean, we just use basically I, like a quilting cotton here. Well. Have we laminated anything besides I, that? I laminated those printable sheets, with which are a little that That's a thicker. More, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're a little bit. But right. I think things that you would not want to laminate would be something with a pile. Obviously. Yeah, well, obviously that would mash it, right. No terry cloth, mm -hmm. but, uh, right. you know. Some it, textures, I guess, but could be not better. A lot. Yeah. But something more subtle than that would be like an upholstery fabric that had a, 
a pile to it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't. I would be. I would be. I would want to make sure that it really adhered to the or whole surface. Or nothing that was quilted. It needs. Right. It needs to be flat because it needs right. to adhere to the whole surface, right. or you'll get. Bubbles. If you want it quilted, you'd have to quilt it afterwards. Yes. Yeah. So any sewing you do, do it afterwards. All right. And so you see, it's real flexible. It is. Easy I to like work it. With. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, that's how to laminate I fabric. Think you can make me an umbrella. Yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> Yeah, that's gonna happen. <laughs> Inside ZD's sewing studio is filmed in front of a live studio audience at Parkgate Center in Columbia, Missouri. Okay, now on to segment two of our show, we're gonna talk about how embroidered applique works. Embroidered applique, this is something done you've this done before. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she taught me. Yeah. Did you know? I'll I'll tell you the story. You okay. may have heard it before. One well, of our I can act like I didn't okay. if you want me to. One okay. of our teachers, Linda Turner, who was a guest on another episode of Inside ZDs, right. How to Embroider on a Onesie, is part of an applique group, some sort of Yahoo group that she's on. Oh. And okay. she said that there were these young women commenting at the group and saying, there are these things on Etsy, and this seller says that she's doing applique just with her sewing machine. <laughs> and I don't even, that she must be lying, because that's not possible. So it's possible. It's possible. And that's how it's been possible for quite some time. How we actually. used to do it. Okay. So, but when we show you how to do applique on the embroidery machine here, it's not the only way, but it is a fun and exciting way to do it. Applique in French means to apply. apply. So, it is a technique of taking a fabric piece and putting it onto another fabric Very piece, cute. most of the time in a decorative shape or mm -hmm. a letter or something like that. Well, are you see like um, your sports, a yeah. lot of your sports uh, clothing, you know, the, the the letters are appliqued on. That's right. And so it's a it's a term a lot of people right. who know who are even non-sewers. Right. But uh, anyway, so that's, that's what's going on today with the applique. A couple tools that are going to help you with embroidered applique are a really good pair of scissors. Right. This is a little set from Floriani that we sell on buysewingthread.com and it is an amazing value. It's an excellent set. Yes. It's got a pair of these duckbill scissors here, has a pair of tweezers, these little thread snips, a couple pair of scissors. The ones we're really interested in today are the duckbill applique scissors and you'll see these up close later. Sometimes these can run you up to $55, oh, $65. Mm -hmm. A good pair. And this whole set of scissors and tools and everything is $75. So yeah. thank you, Floriani. We love it. Right. Keep it and coming. It's excellent to take to class because basically you have the right set of tools for whatever might come up. In a very stylish case. Right. There you go, too. Yes. You're very fashionable with that. Yes. And then uh, Madeira MSA 1000 spray, some sort of temporary spray adhesive mm -hmm. meant for embroidery, not quilting, mm -hmm. basting spray, or anything. It's another thing we're going to use. Right, okay. and, and this is one of our favorites. We've got a couple, but um, what you need to know is you don't want, some of them are too sticky, and you have to be careful when you use it. Mallory will talk about that. Yeah. It's not to absolutely coat something. Absolutely, right. and it's, it's a very temporary thing. Okay, so machine embroidered applique. When you applique something onto a piece of fabric, oftentimes we would trace it on there, or we would cut out our shape first. The machine kind of takes all the guesswork out of it. So there are normally three steps to machine embroidered applique. Number one is a, an outline stitch. Number two is a tack down stitch. And number three is a finishing stitch. Now your machine, in order to stop between all these steps, is going to tell you that you need a color change. Right. You don't actually have to change the color of your thread but we'll show you how this works here at the sewing machine. We're gonna stitch out a design today by Evie Hawkins at A Bit of Stitch. We love her work. We love Evie and love we love Evie. her work. We get to see her next week at Baby Lock Tech. We're very happy and she sent us uh, some new samples of these new designs that That's she right. has out. And anybody who has a sashiko machine, she knows. Yep. Go she's, to Evie. She's Evie your knows resource. What she's doing, right? So today we're going to be stitching out this robot, and we are actually going to use some of the fabrics we just laminated. So we'll make a shiny robot. That's right. So how appropriate to applique with some shiny fabrics to give your robot. So sort this of a, is a new design pack of Evie's. That's right. Okay. That's right. So the first thing that's going to stitch out on Evie's design is a little bit of design work, but also the foundation stitch. So I'm going to press the start button, and we will get started. Okay. Okay. 
So we just stitched out our uh, outline stitch. It gave us a guideline for where our fabric needs to go. Mm -hmm. So you can use scraps of fabric for machine right. embroidered applique, anything you got laying around, as long as it's big enough, and you know it's big enough, because the machine just showed you where it's going to go. Area, what the area is going to be. Now, oftentimes, I can just lay my fabric here on the hoop, it stays nice and flat, and I can continue to embroider. But to be really safe and sure that it's going to stick down, you can use a temporary spray adhesive. Never spray this here. Yeah, I don't know if I can. Never if, spray anything at your machine. I don't know if I have the software to like put a big X over this, but like, right. it, it, maybe, it's I, right. maybe it's I, right. I do. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so I'm going to spray it away from my machine. Oftentimes, uh, we use a cardboard box. Right. We'll just set the box down. It's our spray box. It's where all the overspray can go. I'm just going to do a little bit of spray here, so Tiny it's bit. okay. I'm not going to like spray it at the camera. And you anything. want it about oh, a 10 inches to a foot away mm -hmm. because you don't want to saturate the fabric at right. all. And so, uh, I'll hold so it. I'll hold it. She'll spray my hands. Oh, great. That's it. That's all. That's probably all. That's all I need. And then. Sometimes you have to let it wait just a little bit to get tacky because you don't want it wet. You want it tacky. And I said I was going to put it on the bias. And you are. So I am. I'm just laying down the fabric. And you covered the outline stitching. I didn't. There we go. You didn't? <laughs> there we go. You should. I did. I should. Okay. And I'm smoothing it down. And now I can just start my stitching again. It's very important. <laughs> The next step is to trim away your excess fabric, and I'm using these duckbill scissors. They're wonderful to get a flat surface to cut against. I could take my hoop out of the machine. Just don't unhoop your fabric. Get my quarter. Probably pretty. And the next step is the finishing stitch. This stitch that Evie has designed into her design is a satin stitch. And Evie is a very nice designer because she gives you a nice wide satin yeah. stitch to overcast if you haven't cut super duper close into right. those detail spots. Sometimes you'll have a blanket stitch or yeah. you'll have raw edge applique that doesn't get finished off right. on the end. So we're ready to go. And the designer also will take this opportunity to put in any detail stitching on top of the applique. So you see we've got a few compartments here. We've got the robot head, robot neck, he's got a collar. We don't get his face this time, but that will come later. I'd like to introduce you to my bot buddy, Fred, yeah. here. Fred? Okay, Actually, I think his name is Zap. Zap. Okay. Oh, Zap. this is a good name, yep. Zap. So yeah. as you can see, he's kind of shiny, kind of goes with the robot theme. So the laminated fabric, to answer perhaps a question that somebody may have had, how does it embroider out? Pretty well. Pretty well. Yeah. The needle goes through very nicely. We didn't have any stitching problems. And he is so cute. He's really cute. So if you are interested in the Bot Buddies Embroidery Design Pack, um, check out a bit of stitch.com come into ZD sewing studio and um, we will hook you up okay so any questions about applique or embroidery she just wants to know she when just she wants to know when she can, can get a machine yeah. yeah okay okay all right all right all right well please contact us if you have any questions at um, our website sewhere.com visit the blog for more information on laminated fabric embroidered applique and everything else that's right. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.